got a mini quiz question for you guys. I hope the quiz master nice. doesn't mind me using this format. I need one item of clothing, an accessory. I haven't needed in 10 years. 10 years. Can you guess what item it is? I got it. What? A belt. <laughs> yes. You haven't, you haven't worn a belt in 10 years? Dude. Why I, not? You got married. You didn't wear... I guess you wouldn't wear a belt. You've never worn a belt. Dude, <laughs> I have nice belts, okay? Like expensive belts. And I would put them on, and the buckle, the holes weren't... <laughs> like, they, I couldn't wear them. wasn't stretching far enough, like, technically. So like what I had to yeah. do, I had to wear them a couple times. Like, for the Hall of Fame game, Calgary-Toronto... I went to Canadian Tire, and they have moose belts on the way out. <laughs> they do. Yeah, I've seen about? those things, Dude, man. They're, they're they like a different are, shade. You can wrap mattresses on top of your truck. <laughs> they're like... <laughs> you can wrap a mattress on yeah, top of your truck with seen. these belts that they have at the front. 45 so I, cents. Yeah, for, <laughs> 45 cents. And listen, I had to buy the moose belt, and I had to make a hole close to the end of the moose belt to wear it to the Hall of Fame. That's game. tough, man. Dude, and I'm telling you, I had to wear a belt the other day, and my belt fit. I I, I just I did the sign of the cross. That's Neil, great. That's yeah. amazing. That's yeah, big because, yeah, the belt game – I mean, you're supposed to, like, if you're, like, a 34 waist, you're supposed to get a 36, right? Like, I wonder right. if you just never got the memo that you're supposed to allow yourself a little bit more room. But, wow, there you go. All right. I wasn't expecting this. I'm talking about all the way to the top, yeah. Unjustifiably in a position that I'd rather not be in. But the cream rise to the top, oh, yeah. Yes, it will, man. We're back in the belt game. We're back, back in, the, in belt the belt game. game. I'll light that. I'm going to light that moose belt on fire and have a ceremony at my cottage. <laughs> I want to see one of these things, though. Is Dude, it I'll one bring of those? it. I've seen it. I know exactly. I know exactly. The rack is outrageous. There's, yeah. there's 400 belts on that. You, you'll you, see you, them <laughs> at like random convenience stores and like little strip malls. They're, <laughs> I'm telling you, you can just throw a Christmas tree on your truck, and this yeah. belt will secure it. Like it's, it's like a those... big, massive bungee cord. It's not. Yeah, it, you throw the... things in the back of your truck, and then you cinch them on. You know, like yeah. that's what you're talking about. They're three dollars, and they're brown leather or black leather, <laughs> they're and not they leather. are nine feet long. <laughs> they are not <laughs> leather. <laughs> <laughs> they're not leather. They are not <laughs> leather. Um, You're right. They are not fine Italian leather. <laughs> but I know exactly what you mean, man. I've doubled. I've done a few double takes. I'm like, why could you? Wh what is like? I understand if you're on the way out. You're like, hey, pack of gum. Oh yeah, maybe we'll grab a bag of chips or like a belt. Who is going through Canadian Tire? Then right at the end goes, oh, the belt. Of course, me. me. So, because I went to Canadian Tire and I'm like, I got to go to the uh, arena tonight. I don't have a belt that fits, so I had to buy the moose belt, four ninety nine, and yeah. it's nine feet long. Yeah, and you got to poke a hole in it with a kitchen knife to to, to wear it. Well, I mean that can go other, that can go both ways. If you have if you somehow you're in a bind and you're staying at someone's house and you have to borrow a belt or ruin a belt and you you do the holes that are actually tighter. You know that's one thing. But when you're adding to the end of the belt, that's that's, that's a different story. And I guess that's what we're saying here. But ten years, man, back in the belt game. That's great. Yeah. Love yeah. It, it was that's a nice great. it was a nice moment. I gotta update my belt game. My belt game's pretty weak. I got I don't put a lot of time and effort into a belt. But some people go over the top. Like when we were at Trade Center, Wayne Simmons looked like he had a five thousand dollar belt. He did. Like Wayne looked. Probably he had did, a Louis yeah. Vuitton five thousand dollar belt. Yeah. He had seven thousand dollar shoes on, and he looked gorgeous. <laughs> he looked yeah. incredible. He looked like a guy who was just an athlete. Yeah. Where then there's other guys and other you know people. There's other around. guys yeah. that are buying nine feet long belts at Canadian <laughs> Tire. <laughs> there's the difference. Yeah. Made uh, of vinyl. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, That's exactly. crazy. Yeah. He did look sharp. He did look very sharp. And he had sharp. great information. He was like, great. He was very good. Yeah. Yep. It was a great he day was with great. him. I'm not going to say anything about the one day. I'm not going to do that because I'm a big fan of Wayne Simmons. 
And he's a friend oh, of the show signing now. signing with Philly. Yeah, I'm not, that's right. I wouldn't possibly. I will not be addressing that. Don't ask me. I'm like torts I, with Couturier. Not talking about the one day. Well, I'm not I, talking about the one day. I got to be honest, though. I would like to see a picture of one of these belts from Canadian Tire. Because I, oh, we'll I have no them. idea what Noodles. you're talking oh, about. It's a wrap, hey, dude. The next segment, we'll go to commercial. I'm going to go get the belt and show you the distance that I had to grab a, <laughs> a, a steak knife and cut a hole in. Because mm-hmm. the moose belt stopped, and I had to go 12 inches past the last hole. Yeah, to, it's to wear it. It, it. It's outrageous. It, it's really it's jarring. It's, it's jarring. jarring. It's really <laughs> jarring. Uh, all right, joining us on the Maple Toyota Hotline. Here's our TSN hockey analyst, Mike Johnson. What's happening, Johnny? What's going on, boys? All good. You're not a fan of the one dayer. No, I'm not. With a, I, it, it seems a little unnecessary. Like, That's you know, if you my identify point. As a flyer, yeah. you have a great career there. Everyone's going to think of you in that way. Mm. I don't know if you know. Like Ray Bork going back to Boston for one day, maybe, but that's about the extent of it. Other than that, it's it's, it's sort of yeah unnecessarily symbolic. I, that's my thing, and I understand it is ceremonial. I totally get it. Doesn't actually mean anything. It's a one day, and it's just about building it up. And I like I get it for the player, and I'm not expecting the player. to It's change for the their fans opinion. too, and the fan. But that's where I come in. Oh, I'm kind of like, what does that mean? It's a one day. Like I, what is, I don't understand how. Oh, you know, I would have been really disappointed if he didn't retire. As a raptor, you know, but now he, because Lowry, remember when Kyle was in town? He's like, I'll do the one day. Oh, well, then that means you actually were a raptor. Where, no, you weren't. It's where did you right. play last? Like, that's, that's where you retired, wherever you played last, but it's ceremonial. It doesn't really matter. It's a, it's a mole hill. It's not a mountain. And I'm in a good, mm-hmm. good mood today, Johnny. So okay. don't have to get into any of that because the kid himself's rolling through his hometown tomorrow. The, uh, McDavid, Dry Settle, Hyman show, and we were talking about this earlier. Well, I'm curious how you might answer this. More likely to happen tomorrow night. Matthew scores three and gets to sixty, or Hyman scores two and gets to fifty. Hmm, that's a good. Like, that's like what does Matthews have? Five hat tricks mm-hmm. this season. Mm-hmm. Six. Maybe. I think six. six maybe. Yeah, six I think you're right. Noodles. Uh, Hyman has four plus at least one other two goal game last night. I would say it's more likely that Hyman gets two. I mean, he's probably done it more times than 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 Austin's had three or more. So, mm-hmm. um, the way, and the way he's going right now, like Zach Hyman is as hot as any goal scorer in the NHL. It's amazing, and it would be so sort of symbolic to kind of go full circle with the team he started in his hometown if he's able to get to fifty with tons of time left. Like I thought, maybe he would slow down, and it might get stressful. But nope, like he's going to blow through 50 at game 70. Like the Oilers have the most games left in the league. They got 15 games left. In fact, the, the, you know, his chase is almost more with 60 than yeah. with 50, which seems ludicrous to say the goals that are being scored now, 50 being such an importantly historic number for goal scores. It just was something that is so hard to do. Only the best of the best get there and now not that Zach Hyman is not incredible he's having a great year he's a very good player but you know he, he might push 55 57 goals that is a serious number regardless of the era that you play in he's having that kind of year so happy for him I mean obviously he picked Edmonton it's worked out brilliantly for him with McDavid and Drysdale and the rest but um he would probably be walking back as if he needed to but Head held high, shoulders back, heading into the rink tomorrow night. Like, yeah, I'm I'm in a pretty good spot. Johnny, what do you make? So, if if like we saw it the other night, basically, uh, Strom had a breakaway and he threw it back door to Ovi. And I said this, <laughs> I, I said this to uh, the guys yesterday. I said, I think if Austin gets in that seventy stratosphere, like that's what guys will be trying to do. I would argue that that's what McDavid will be trying to do with Hyman, whether it's 50 or 60, because guys know the importance of these numbers. And I know both these teams shouldn't care about regular season, you know, trophies and accolades, but it is very cool in a, in a vacuum. Are you, we, do you feel like the team would be focused on that for both sides, for Matthews at 70 and, and let's say Hyman 50 slash 60, you name it, whatever. Yeah, I, first of all, that strong pass to Ovechkin was ridiculous. Like, he gave up a breakaway, basically, to pass it to a guy who's in a terrible spot on the goal line, but Ovi right. still scored it. And But, yeah, like I think, you know, when I'm watching the games, I'm calling the games, like, you see guys do that with Austin anyways. 
like I think Max Domi sometimes overpasses to Austin because he's deferring to the guy who's the great goal scorer. And yes, they would go to him more if he gets closer to 60 or closer to 70. But I think they go to Matthews a lot anyways because he's Austin Matthews. The difference might be in Edmonton, because as great as Zach Hyman is, like Drysaddle is a better goal scorer than Zach Hyman. And, and not this year, but Connor McDavid is also an incredible goal scorer. But I bet those guys would forego good looks as goal scorers to try to get him to 50. Like if he gets one early tomorrow night, uh, McDavid will be looking for him all game long. Absolutely. He'll know exactly what's up. I think, I think at this point, Connor McDavid wants 100 assists more than he wants goals. Um, I think there's only three players who've ever had 100 assists yep. in the season. Yep. And Gretz and Lemieux and Bobby Orr. So that's a pretty exclusive company. And he's well on his way at 86 with 15 games left. So I think Hyman will definitely be a, a, a focus. But the, the tricky part, Noodles, is that he's obviously going to get 50. So I think the real pressure or like the, 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 the focus would come if he gets close to 60. Then, you, you know, empty net situations and, you know, overpassing to him, that stuff probably would start happening the last five, six games of the season if it gets close. Yeah, we were talking about, you know, the, the history, and you got it right, Gretzky or Lemieux. Orr and Lemieux did it once each in their career. Wayne mm-hmm. Gretzky did it 11 straight seasons. 11 <laughs> straight he had over insane. 100 assists. That's insane. Which is just absurd. Um, and McDavid's getting there. Like you said, he's got, he's got 15 games for 14 assists. He, he could be halfway there by the end of this weekend. They play twice. But mm-hmm. Kucherov is 19 away from 100, and he's got 13 games left. That seems likely, too. He had four assists last night. He's got 23 assists in his last 12 games. Like, if he hits 100, like, he's not going to dunk on McDavid because McDavid will have more assists. But he's now, I think, five points clear of McKinnon and 10 clear or nine clear of McDavid. And if this cat scores 50, I think he's got 41 goals. Like, it's, it's possible Kucherov goes... 50 goals, 100 assists. I mean, could you imagine? Come on. Could you imagine? Yeah. Like, we were going crazy last year for McDavid, who had his 62 goals, whatever he had, and, and 150 points. And Kucherov going to, you know, do something very similar to that the next season. And you imagine McDavid, he tidies up a, a quick little four point effort and then sits down to have his post game shake thinking he's within six of the scoring lead. <laughs> Hold, hang on, says Kucherov. He goes for four of his own. Kucherov has 15 points in his last four games. Mm-hmm. Like he's averaging four points a game. It, it's, it's really amazing what he's doing. And, um, you know, we've kind of gone down the MVP road before, but it, it, it really is something what he's doing offensively. And it will, <laughs> through no fault of McDavid's or whoever, it will sort of diminish if only three people in history have done 100 points and you're going to be the fourth, but, oh, yeah, there's going to be a fifth in the same season, it's sort of like, oh, well, maybe that was just one of those years where everyone had a lot of points and it's not quite as impressive when you're not the only one to do it. Do you think, Johnny, because Kucherov has, like, I said this earlier and it wasn't, like, trying to discredit what McKinnon's doing, but everyone seems to be biased for McKinnon winning the heart this year? Is it because mm-hmm. Kucherov has already done it? And they're like, well, you got your heart trophy. I, like As much as I love McKinnon, I would love the story. I love the player. I don't think that's right to just discard Kucherov's play because he's won a heart trophy before. Yeah, there definitely is a narrative of... Um, of it's his time to get his. his. Turn. He's a great one. He's not done this before. So, you know, he, he deserves it. It's, it's his time to go there. Um, now, I think you're not necessarily discrediting Kucherov because I think everyone is going to have Kucherov in their top three or four, right? Like, I don't think anyone's saying he doesn't deserve to be considered. I think they're just saying they feel McKinnon is a bit ahead of, of Kucherov. And the only number that, like, so Nikita Kucherov has been on, now I know you don't care for defense, but, like, you know, if you're going to split hairs over who's the best, Right? That's what we're talking about. Who's the best? Kucherov's been off for the second most goals against it, even strength in the entire, in the entire league. Only Chikrin's been on for more. Right? He's been outscored at even strength. Uh, or he's been, or he's, he's been he's outscored by a little bit. He's got 85 even strength goals against. Second most in the whole league. Whereas McKinnon, you know, is, has been better than that. He's, been, he's better defensively than that. So that, you know, that's, McKinnon's been on for 68. 
You know, that, that number does matter. McKinnon's a centerman. You know, those kind of things probably make it McKinnon the guy, not just the narrative, which is absolutely out there. Um, but I think what Kucherov is doing is going to make himself clearly a number two or at least a finalist for sure. Um, I just don't know if the defensive side of the puck is going to hurt him actually winning the trophy this year. With Mike Johnson, at what point do you start either getting concerned, worried, or thinking about what's up with Marner and how it could affect the stretch run and into the playoffs? Um, sort of now. You know what I mean? Like The fact that he, he, he tried to play and then had to stop again, that, that tells you the severity of it. When Sheldon Keith sort of said, he's not available, read into that what you will, sort of also speaks to the severity of the injury. We know how tricky high ankle sprains can be for hockey players. Just the nature of the, the way you skate and the, the torque and the boot and everything else, it's, it's, it's tough. And so I, I, you know, if he's not going to play for another week, another two weeks, there's only three weeks left in the season, right? So he's going to have to get his timing. He's going to have to learn to trust his, his, his foot, make sure that that's okay. And, um, if that doesn't happen until the last three, four games, like let's be honest, the Leafs this year are not good enough to to be a threat unless their best players are all very good, and they need to be healthy to be very good. So if if Mitch Marner's not able to go and they're playing Florida or Boston, like that's that's a major problem for the Toronto Maple Leafs. So I am a little concerned, no fault of anybody's, but the fact that he's not even on the ice, like he's he's, he's nobody's even seeing him around. Um, tells you that he's pretty far away with not a lot of time left. What do you make of T.J. Brody getting a little bit of a rest here? What do you read into it? There's been, Hayes said it in the 4 o'clock hour, the, the, the Leafs have been pretty happy, or not happy, but reset happy this year as far as giving guys <laughs> resets. So uh, right. do you feel like this is a slight reset for T.J.? Just get him uh, a little bit of a breather, let him see the game from a different vantage point? Yeah, I mean, I, he, he listen, he hasn't played great. He'd say that to him. We, we know he had a very difficult personal summer last year. His father passed away. His preparation wasn't normal. He's had a tough year. Um, and the Leafs now, with Connor Timmons being healthy, and we'll have, what, I don't know, Mark Giordano is probably sniffing around being healthy as well. They're going to have seven, eight, nine defensive options. And so they have the luxury of, you know, sitting T.J. Brody down, getting him a mental break, a physical break, I don't know how much TJ Brody is pulling in from watching from the TV or from the press box. He's probably not even in the press box, right? He'll be down in the dressing room. But I just think it's just stepping away and, and taking a breath because it's, it's just not been his usual self. He was great. When Riley got suspended, he went to play on the left side. He, he was pretty good. But then it's sort of gotten away from him again. So, um, again, I think Sheldon Keefe is trying to do everything to get his playoff roster as prepared as they can be to be good in the playoffs. And that means T.J. Brody being a real steady, reliable presence. And um, this is one step towards it. With the way he was playing, it's understandable. Like he, he probably could have used a break. It wasn't going well for him. Yeah, and we'll have Edmonton in here tomorrow. And, you know, we're obviously focused on the Leafs a lot, and this market is. And if you're a Leaf fan, obviously you're, you're worried about your own team and what's up with Marner, what's up with Yarn Croak, what are they going to do with the defensive pairings. And I think Edmonton's a perfect example of how those type of nitpicking discussions and concerns and anxieties apply to everyone, including Edmonton. But if you're from afar, you just look at it and say, wow, they're unbelievable. And they are. They're playing great. Yet Evander Kane's starting to really struggle again. Uh, they're still figuring out what's up with Connor Brown. I know he scored a couple of late goals recently. You know, what do they do with CC? A couple of issues possibly on the back end in terms of pairings. Mm -hmm. um, yet... Again, they're winning a lot. They're a juggernaut team. They have a great chance at, at doing great things. Um, but the deadline's come and gone. Like, where, where are you at with the Oilers and, and kind of where they feel, how close they feel to being in a position to, to pounce come, come the playoffs? They're as good as anybody out West, right? They have as good a chance as any of the six. I mean, put Nashville in there, seven. Put Vegas in there, eight. Like, whoever makes the playoffs of those eight teams, would you be stunned? I guess Nashville we still would be surprised. Yeah. But, right. And maybe L.A. a little bit. But any of the other teams, you're like, yeah, like I could see Vegas or Winnipeg or Dallas or Colorado or Vancouver or Edmonton. Like any of them could totally make it. And they're in that group. They might be at the front of that group because of their star power. Um, but it's a reminder 
we all are as fans of teams or you're analyzing a team, you're, you're, you're analyzing what you perceive to be a perfect team. And those things don't exist anymore. They don't exist in the NHL. They just do not um, because of the limitations of the salary cap and everything else. And like Adam Henrique, I think we all like the player and the acquisition. It's not gone well for him in, in Edmonton to start his, you know, he's, he's not having the kind of impact they were hoping for. You know, they have questions themselves. Absolutely. But they also have a lot of answers. And I think that's where I think in Toronto, we sometimes forget that there's a lot of question marks about Toronto, but there's a lot of answers in Toronto as well. Really good players that can make really special things happen. And the thing for me, noodles is like uh, Stuart Skinner has not been great in the last 20 games. Yeah, he gets, he's getting lots of wins because Edmonton rarely loses, but maybe a little bit like Georgiev, like good, but not great. And I guess that would be also an area of concern that the Oilers might have similar to the Leafs. Like how good can they confidently count on their goaltending to be? If he's very good, the Oilers will be really tough to beat. If he's not, then they'll be vulnerable because there's so many other good teams in the West as well. Yeah, that's the one thing. Like I've always felt he's played a little bit too much this year. Last night was mm-hmm. his 50th game. Uh, he played 50 last year and then went into the playoffs. So, you know, they're going to ask him to play probably 60 this year. Um, you know, I'd like to see it drop to 57, 58 just for his, you know, the body, all of that. But as you mentioned, they've got 15 games left. So he might get to 60 and Pickard gets the other five type of thing. Mm-hmm. But he's the guy. And, you know, the one thing that I will give Ken Holland credit is he's been very consistent. Jack Campbell struggled this year, waved him, put him in the minors. They said, okay, we're going to run with Skinner. You fired the coach. You've made some moves. But they've said all along, we drafted this guy. We developed him. We believe in him. we got to get him experience. And that's what they're doing. I would have liked to see them, you know, again, in a perfect world, grab a Marc-Andre Fleury at the deadline or something like that. But then you look at, for what they're asking of their backup, Pickard had done a really good job statistically. So I think they're they're fine. And then, you know, it, there's no salary cap in the playoffs. Jack Campbell will be their third. So there's your veteran guy if something all hell breaks loose or, or somebody gets injured. So I think it's, it's, you know, we all know it's Skinner or Bust. But he's going to have to hold up. You know, he's 24, 25 years old. Like he's, this is uh, his time right now. Yeah, you're just thinking, first round, they get L.A., I suppose. So it's going to be Cam Talbot. That, that might be a wash. But second round, they're going to get Demko. Third round, they're going to get some version of Hellebuck or Ottinger or maybe Colorado and what they can play. Like, goaltending is going to have to be good. So I do. I, I agree that they have the way that they very publicly never wavered from their belief in him would make him feel good about himself and, and offer him as much confidence as possible. But it'll be a fun game tomorrow, right? Like Edmonton's rolling along. They can score at will. Um, you know, McDavid's doing his thing. So it'll be a fun game. But, uh, I, yeah, Edmonton, as good as they've been, they're not perfect either. Where's your spidey senses on Canadian teams heading into the playoffs, Johnny? One mm-hmm. member of this panel does not like Vancouver going into the playoffs, will not mention names. Do you have any spidey <laughs> senses or thoughts? <laughs> so um, I would be cons- – like, I like the teams out west. I think all three of them are really good. I and, I've, and Vancouver, I've come around on. I was a little bit leery. You know, they ride in hot shooting and just great goaltending, but they have actually buckled down and, and, and elevated their defensive game so that Demko hasn't been, well, Demko's not even playing now, but the goaltender hasn't been required to be as great. Plus, they can score, plus all the good players they have. You know, if they get Susie back, like they, they are, they're, they're going to be really good. So I have come around on on Vancouver. I could see Vancouver Edmonton in the second round, which means one of those two teams will go to the conference final. That's good news for Canada. And for Winnipeg, I am just concerned if they don't win the division. Like, I just think that road, if you have to go through Dallas, then Colorado, then whoever in the conference final, that is a very tough path, way harder than the Eastern conference, way harder and I think the Central, those top three teams are so good. And Nashville is no cupcake either. Um, that I think that's why I would be worried about Winnipeg. Not that I don't like their game, their team. I just think the path to the Central is so hard. Yeah, and I mean, that's the handicapping when it comes to the Leafs, too. That you got to play Florida well, or Boston, problem, right? and then Florida yeah. or Boston. I mean, it just, it, it's a very difficult road, yet, you know, crazier things have happened, and you know Nashville more than likely starts to get it stays in the central. 
But that means Vegas more than likely starts in the Pacific. So, uh-huh. you know, if Stone comes back, if Hurdle comes back, a lot of ifs. But if that happens, they have the championship pedigree. Like that's – if you're Vancouver and you've had a just a remarkable season and your first round is against Vegas, <laughs> like it just – it will that will not go over well. Yeah, that they will not – up Vegas. A healthy Vegas. You know, a so healthy, bulk, bulked up Vegas. That will not yeah. be received well in Vancouver. <laughs> you get up 110 points, you're first in the league or something, and you get <laughs> defending champs with you know a $10 million player returning, understandably, and Hurdle coming in and Hannafin and everything else. Yeah, that would be... But you know, this is the reality. The, the West is, is significantly better. I mean, like everyone... The East is strange, right? Like the East has, I think, four really good teams, and you can rank them however you want between Boston, Florida, New York, and Carolina. And then Toronto sort of is in a league of its own as the as the fifth team. Like they're much better than I think Tampa or Philly or Detroit, but they're not as good as the top four. They're just sort of on an island in the middle. Whereas the West West is much more clustered. They go a whole bunch of good teams, and they're harder to choose between them. Mm-hmm. The Leafs are are in that middle ground where they will be an underdog in every series they play, um, and they should be because they're not as good as the teams they're going up against. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that, uh, that's the reality. Hmm? Which doesn't matter. I mean, wasn't Florida the underdog every series last year? Yeah, they exactly. Yeah. Like, it yeah. can't happen, exactly. but it just means that it's going to be difficult. All right, yeah, Johnny. We'll leave it there, man. We'll see. It's going to be a fun weekend, though. Like we were saying, this is as tough as it gets. Edmonton, Carolina, back to back in under yeah. 24 hours. Um, like Carolina's just rocking right now. Gensel's been good. Gensel's Jarvis. been good. Jarvis. I don't want to bring yeah. up bad memories. Do we know how I Carolina know. got Jarvis? Yes, Marlo. Yes, we did it. Yes. No, what was Thank it again? You. It was Marlo, the ra- the the cap yeah. dump. Cost oh no! Him a step yeah. Jarvis. Take, take, take Marlo. You can have a first round pick too. And, and it ended up being Seth Jarvis. Seth Jarvis. Oh my god! Guy's gonna have sixty five points. He's year. a beauty too. He's hilarious. Like, did you, you see ever his? Uh, did, did you see his interview the other day? They were talking. Was it after the rookie dinner or something? And he was like, "No, I was just uh, I was at the gym working out." Because yeah. they asked him, he was sweating out booze, and he was like, "That was no, after I, the that was after the All Star break noodle." Oh, is that what it like, was? No, okay. no, I, I didn't need to. I was at the gym the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't want that guy around. Why would you want that guy around? Uh, They probably would have picked someone else anyway. It doesn't matter. (laughs) All right, Johnny, I was in a good mood 20 minutes ago, and now it's a different story. My work here is done. (laughs) Your work here is done. (laughs) Thank you for this. Have a good weekend, boys. There it is. Mike Johnson, our TSN hockey analyst, joining us here on the Maple Toyota Hotline. Yeah, that'd be a fun one. That'd be an interesting right side. Seth Jarvis. Yeah. Seth Jarvis. It turned into, was it the 14th or 15th pick? Because uh, Seth Jarvis, Mitch Marner, Zach Hyman patrolling the right side. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> William Nylander. Right. There's your four on the right. Seth yeah, Jarvis well, Hyman, on the fourth line. Oh, Hyman, Hyman was left. Hyman's on the left, left side. Yeah. yeah. Played yeah. the left side. There were some people that weren't a fan of Zach Hyman playing with Matthews and Marner. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Just some random people that were like, yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah. Well, it happens. Crazy stuff. It Crazy happens. Stuff. Yeah, I mean, you look at the right side. You still got Marner. You got Nylander. Um, Nylander. I saw who was it that was tweeting that out? Simmons, I think, saying that um, if he hits a hundred points, no, no right, no winger has ever had a hundred points in Leave history. Yeah, because Marner hasn't done it, no, right? He hasn't. He's been close. He's like 97, 98, 99 yeah. or something crazy. Yeah, he's he's been mid to high nineties multiple times, but has not hit it. And it's it's Gilmore, Sittler, and Matthews. Like those are the only guys who have hit a hundred points. And Willie Willie's on pace to to not only do it, but he very well could blow past that. You know, I mean, ten points in thirteen, fourteen games for him is yeah. What did they have left? They have fourteen games left. Yeah, they've got uh, fourteen. And he's got ninety points. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, yeah, at the, at the that... pace he's been on all year, he's he's going to hit one ten. You know, something like that. If he just continues to play the way he's been playing all year, which is pretty incredible. Um, and again, that'll be more than I think Matthew's best year. I think when he won the heart, I believe he had 106. Yeah, he did points. Which, you know, you talk about moving the bar. He can move his own bar if he gets to 61 goals. If Nylander gets to 107 points, that's a new bar set in terms of this era. Um, so. We'll see. Lee Soilers tomorrow. Uh, Gary Trent Jr.'s out tonight. I don't know if that's going to affect the line. We talked about this earlier. I don't see how it can. 
The, the, the Raptors are a 17-point underdog tonight on FanDuel. 17-point. That's a one versus a 16 seed. Legitimately happening at Scotiabank tonight. Uh, paying homage to the madness. Uh, Pierre Lebrun still to come. Dear Hazy, be in an hour. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. Well, you guys owe me an apology. Oh, yeah? Okay. I've got the moose belt, and it says genuine leather. Wow. And this thing, I mean, if you're in the car right now, it is. it, it doesn't end. And it says, it says on it, touching each 44, wall. and I had to cut a hole four inches after the last buckle. That is, this thing, it's a bungee cord. Yeah, that that's the kind of thing you take, like, wild horses down with. And, you know, like, there are, there are cowboys out, like, in the deep They use these Texas. for fights back yeah. in the cow, like, that's Cowboy right. Days. Back in the old yeah. West, it's like, man, there goes, there goes a wild, wild horses with, <laughs> <laughs> with the Canadian tire moose belt. There was somebody who sent a picture of us to us to the Overdrive account that had a pictures of at the moose belt rack at Canadian Tire. Dude, mm. it's, man, oh man, yeah, well, it's, it's, dude, it's it, there's there are copious amounts of options. There's so many belts. I, it's it's I've never flooring. seen them before, ever. You can't miss it, Noodles. Time. Like, you can't. You can't. It's just like the, they lead you through nowhere. this maze to the checkout, and right on the left, it's just four <laughs> racks of moose belts. I, yeah. Like, I've gone to Canadian Tire my whole life. You know, it's I've probably just been absent-minded to it. You just yeah. walk by it and never notice it. I've never noticed it in my lifetime. And well, I was at Canadian Tire last week. Yeah. You're not in the market for a belt, you know, and at that point, once you're yeah. at checkout, mentally you've checked out. You're not no, paying attention. No, if you're not in the market for this, it's like a funeral. <laughs> you just pass by and you kind of give your condolences to the moose belt rack and you keep trucking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're not, you're not interested. Wow, there's wow. so much going on at a Canadian Tire. Like, the amount of items they have there. <gasps> oh, is, oh. Like, how many times? Like, now it's different because you can go online and you can find out. Like, my wife will send me there a lot. Like, okay, we need yeah. something. Can you go get me? And she'll be like, it's on row 68. I'm like, okay, perfect. Yeah. I, I'm going to 68, and I'm looking for it. Prior to the internet, you just show up and be like, how the hell am I getting around this place? Dude, I got a ton of yeah. respect, though. You say, hey, bud, I need uh, salt for the driveway, aisle 47, third shelf, up on the top. <laughs> oh, it's yeah, just like how they, in, man. You can ask them 10 different questions about stuff. They are dialed in, and yeah. they're all ready to rock. I agree. They wow. got their game face That's, on. gives me flashbacks, man, because I used to work at a Loblaws when I was a kid. Like my first job, I was 14 or 15 as a grocer. And they always told you, like, when you started working there, and I barely worked. It was like a couple times a week. I was making five fifty an hour. I remember that was the minimum wage, five fifty an hour. So you bag yeah. groceries. I I would stock shelves and move stuff around. You know, it was, and you'd, you'd put in four or five hour shifts. It was a part time thing. Um, and I remember when I first got the job, like that was one of the first things that that the manager told Get familiar. me. Familiar. Be familiar because customers are going to ask you. <laughs> I never knew anything. And people would always be like, hey, where's the salt? I'd be like, three miles over, and I'd dart to yeah, the back. Just... <laughs> so I'm like, Make oh. something up. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I think it's right down here. Hang a left. I'm going the other way because if I run into that guy, he's like, hey, idiot, you yeah. sent me the wrong way. It's not even clear. You don't even have that product. You know, I'd just yeah. make up something. I'd be like, oh, I'm pretty sure it's two rows over, bottom shelf, three steps in. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like, break. I'm out yeah. of here. I'm Some leaving. guy just sent me a tweet and said, sent all of us a tweet. Genuine leather is the lowest grade <laughs> and likely only a small portion. Thank you for right. that. Like, Gen thanks. Genuine. It's, it's, it's with a J. It's yeah. probably the company name. <laughs> it's from the Pacific Mall. <laughs> Thank you for informing me the moose belt is not high Italian leather. Right. Like, oh, I get it. I know. <laughs> it, would be, it would have to be $8,000 if it was real leather. Oh, with yeah. that amount, with that amount of product, that like you amount. would have to be, it would be such a yeah. an expensive belt. But getting back to Canadian Tire, they have everything. But I feel like they've got their own brand. Like you walk in there, there's mm -hmm. chips and stuff in yeah, an aisle. Do. Franks, they yes, have, they that's have what it's. Franks. Franks. I think the belts might. The Frank probably has a belt line. 
I'm a Jeep I Frank brought hope some line. Frank. I brought home some of those chips, and like the kids are like, "What the hell is that?" I'm like, "I don't genuine know. Genuine chips, it's- genuine <laughs> Canadian chips." <laughs> it said barbecue chips. I grabbed them. Like they're like, "Where are these from?" I'm like, "Canadian Tire." I bought some. Yeah, I grabbed you know, the salt for the drive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, Canadian Tire has everything. They it's do, man. Awesome. They don't miss. There's a reason. They're, they're one of the, the great, they're, great products. They're the we've, greatest. I love, the greatest. I love this country. I love you. Get a, you get a belt and some chips on the way out of Canadian Tire. Oh uh, man, I love it. Uh, another place we love, Mail It In Fridays, brought to you by Boston Pizza, Canada's yes. favorite sports bar. From tip offs to tie bites and puck drops to pizza, BP's elite lineups of abs, wings, and ice cold beer. It's always dialed in for game time. Also in your local BP tonight, where they'll be obviously showing you know a bunch of games. March Madness, Raptors in action tonight. Leafs tomorrow. Leafs on Sunday. Jays soon. You see Manoa pitched a live batting practice today, and he did a scrum afterwards, and he seemed to be in really good spirits. But Rob Longley, the son, asked him what is a completely standard question um, that I'm sure he was prepared for. He gave a little bit of a like a curious kind of response, but then didn't get into the answer. Yeah, we have it. So Rob asked him like halfway through the scrum, like at what point did your shoulder start feeling better? Right. That's why you haven't been pitching. Your shoulder wasn't feeling well. Like at what point did it become clear? Your, your shoulder was feeling better. And here's what Manoa had to say. Yeah, I would just say uh, just just mostly soreness and uh, some inflammation in there. And, um, you know, our training staff has done a great job of uh, creating a really good plan to be able to strengthen that area. And, um, you know, I would say probably I really don't even know the timeline. I'm lost in all these days. Um, but I would say um, we went through a progression, like a, a light throwing progression, a couple of days shut down. And um, I would say at the end of that light throwing progression, that's where it started to feel good and we were able to get on them out. All right, so prior to that, he kind of said it was a trick question, or I don't remember what he said. Can we get that the full thing, JP, please? Because still sounds like he doesn't JP, know what that the hell's is going your fault. on. <laughs> that is your fault. <laughs> that <laughs> one, that one, we're tweeting about. That one, yeah. you can because he he. Okay, let's play play what we were setting up here because again, he was asked the question, and and here's here's the full answer. Okay, that's a trick question, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> that was <an> intended. <laughs> Um, yeah, I would just say, uh, just, okay, just mostly. So, all right. So it's anyway, he was kind of pausing and then he's what's like, so tricky. I don't it, know. Right? That's what I don't quite understand. I don't know. What's a trick question. Like you haven't been pitching cause your shoulders hurt. Yeah. When so, did it start feeling better is like a normal question from Rob who's yeah. on it. Yeah, exactly. Seems like a non, the, the least tricky question you could possibly but he, have but even his answer was elusive and he's like i yeah. don't know you know we had a progression and then we shut it down and like doesn't sound like he knows i mean i think they know what they have mm-hmm. for a plan for him he doesn't know you know like right he might be pitching in the minors in a week Who well knows? that's what's becoming clear here like bowden francis who was announced yesterday will be pitching and now i guess ricky tiedemann's got a chance to break camp too i'm, I'm assuming that revolves around gosman if gosman's going to be good to go or not but if he has to go on the il they're going to need a fifth starter, and Tiedemann's going to be the guy. And this is the nature of sports, where the next guy's always coming, right? Like it was, it was. There was Dustin McGowan, and then there was Aaron Sanchez and Stroman, and then it was you know whoever else it was going to be. That was Manoa. And now it's now it's Tiedemann. Like you're always the new the new guy's coming. Like the next stud's coming, and if Tiedemann steps in and pitches well, that's one more guy that Manoa's going to have to battle with. And it seems it seems Brian. That he's he's being pulled in a bunch of different directions. Like I get the sense he's getting advice away from the baseball field. I don't know if that's from agents or different people in his life. It just doesn't seem like he knows which way is up right now. And it, I don't know. That's just the sense I get where he doesn't know mm-hmm. what's up here. I don't think he's in. He just needs to focus on one direction, whatever direction that's going to be. And the only direction he needs to focus on is is getting back to the big leagues and being trying to be the guy that he used to be. Yeah. And he's just right. got to focus like on that. And I don't know. He just seems it just seems like there's so many different things and he seems confused almost. That's that's the sense I yeah. get. Yeah. I do I do think he's he's confused with what's going on with his body, his plan, where it's going to go, what's happened to him. How yeah. the Jays are going to handle it. The Jays, I mean, it's business. It's a winning business. The Jays are going to put forth the best possible team they can. They're not going to hand him anything. They played that card last year. 
Like they want, they kept going back to him. They kept trying him. They kept pushing it. They're not going to do that again. They can't. You cannot afford for this guy to find himself against the Yankees. You know, you just you can't do that. It's Major League Baseball. It's professional sports. Um, so yeah, that you know, it. it I hope. We, like we keep saying, I'm pulling for the guy. It sounds like it went pretty well today, but it's a live batting practice. I don't know what else to make of it, but. Got us thinking of that Sammy Sosa clip from last week. I don't know if you guys saw Sammy was back in uh, Chicago, and he had a big falling out, obviously, with the Cubs. Like it got yeah. really ugly, and he—I don't think he's been back in town since like 2007 or something like that. And he was back for some some big expo or some some big event, and he did a scrum. You guys want to hear it? Kind yes, of the, the I need to hear it. And <laughs> there was one answer, or he wasn't prepared for this. Forget Manoa not prepared for Longley. <laughs> Sammy wasn't wasn't prepared for this one. Is it time for you and Tom Ricketts to sit down to get back into their good graces? Well, like I say, you know, I'm a mature man. Uh, I, I, you know, I think that uh, it's a possibility that we can do that. I'm open. I don't have a problem with that. Um, you know, I have, like I said, I have a lot of misunderstanding in the past. But now I'm a, I'm, I'm a real man. I feel great. So I recognize my mistake. So, hey, why not? Are you telling me that you recognize the fact that maybe you did do steroids? Um, <laughs> this is, um, like I say, um, this is um, um, not a question that I expect from you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, his head was spinning. Like, yeah. that is not a question I expected from you. Yeah, that's a tough follow-up, though. Yeah. Like, that just stone-faced asked it, like, yeah. is the mistake you doing steroids? So you took roids? Uh, You're willing to admit that? I'll tell you yeah. what. There's not a lot of athletes. Like, some guys <laughs> put weight on, whatever. There's not a lot of guys where they do not look anything like they did when they were playing. That that does Sammy's, not look like Sammy Sosa. No. No, it yeah. doesn't, man. He And he was such a, a player. I mean, we all know what was going on, and... But him and McGuire, and it wasn't only that year. He had, I believe, back-to-back -back years of 60-plus. Like, he was unbelievable. Yeah. He was so good. I, I was in St. Louis. McGuire, McGuire was my right? neighbor it, it when Mac was hitting 70. Unreal. Like, it was crazy. Like, yep. that was. Back McGu and forth. Yeah, that was. We had two studs in St. Louis that year. That was, Pronger won the heart mm -hmm. and the Norris, and, and Mac hit 70. Like, that was crazy. Unreal. Yeah, and him and Sosa, back and forth, back and forth, summer 98. Like, you never forget that. Got baseball back, like, after the strike. and Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I was just – can we isolate his one answer there, JP? Like, you don't, I guess if you play, maybe play the, the reporter asking the question if you can, or Joe from the bridge. I don't know if that's possible. But we got to hear Sammy one more time. Can we do that? No? All right. It's all good. We'll come back and maybe do that. I'm yeah, throwing, I want to hear it one Throwing curveballs at the boys here. They'll come back and get to that. All right, we'll play Sammy again because I think it's worthy of it. Uh, Pierre Lebrun coming up. Dear Hazy B coming up. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. All right, every day we name a current to former Maple Leaf player. And on Fridays, which is today, you have a chance to call in and name all five players from the Leafs lineup. We're giving away tickets to see the Leafs Devils March 26th. Plus, throwing in a $250 Vanilla Visa prepaid card. Vanilla Visa prepaid cards are available for purchase at Petro Canada. Today's player of the day is Hal Gill. Hal Gill. Scotch. Hal. Has to be. <laughs> Scotch himself. Call us right now, 416-870-1050. 416-870-1050. First one in with all five Leafs named. You're going to see Leafs Devils and picking up a $250 Vanilla Visa prepaid card. Um... Some news here. Tom Wilson, six games. Six games for the high stick on Noah Gregor. I mean, That's you a get lot. the call from Georgie, man. You're going down. That's, or yeah. you got to go see him in person. You're going down. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a it's a big number. and But it's Tom Wilson. He come with a reputation. It was a reckless swing of the stick. I mean, you know, I, I think there's a lot of different factors that come with it. But bottom line is it's... It's a big number, and I, I think it's a message sent. Like Morgan Riley was a, I know not a repeat offender. We we can't we don't need to rehash the Morgan Riley situation, mm -hmm. but it was a headshot. Noah Gregor got a stick in the head across the face. Yep, like that. It, it was 
And we all love Tom, but that was a reckless play, and he got clipped. Yeah. Oh, he knew yeah. it. Like, he knew it immediately. And he, it had zip on it, too. Like, it yeah. was he, – he tried to hit Gregor, and then he got pissed, and they were losing. And I, I don't think Washington's going to make the playoffs anyway, but that – that really hurts. It's like a big that's blow. Really, he's a hell of a player. Yeah, it's really a, a detrimental play now, and he's paying a massive price. Six games when you're into the end of March here, that, that is a massive hit to that team and their chances of actually making the playoffs. Um, I mean, it kind of feels like Detroit and Philly, it changes every 24 hours in the yeah. East, but Detroit has now won a couple games in a row, and they have a bit of a buffer. They get a three-point buffer on Washington, but Washington mm. has a couple games in hand. Going to hurt them, man. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, I mean, Philly's Philly's right there, too, at 79 points. Um, and a lot of these teams behind them have games in hand. But, yeah, at this point, yeah. like Philly and Detroit getting in, that, that would have been a surprise, I think, for a lot of people before the season began. The idea that both would get in. Even one of them getting in would have been a surprise, but both of them getting in. And, like, Jersey not making it, I think, is really yeah. shocking considering the hype that they had. Oh, and big time. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. And they're, they're not likely to make it. They're still technically in the hunt, but it's basically over. I was under the understanding that if Jersey got a goalie this summer, that they would be real deal Holyfield and competing. Like, take that next step and, and do serious damage. And yeah. The the fact that they are where they are, crazy. Yeah, and well, it cost Lindy Ruff his job. Yeah, well, you, you, think about it. Okay, so they've got seventy two. They're six points out. Okay, with twelve games left. Maybe they did have a goalie. That's that's your six points right there. Noodles, but what right. what happened in the playoffs? Yanking those guys all the time. It's like, and I understand they came back and beat the Rangers, but to go into the season with that goaltending tandem, I think was asinine. And I said before, I love Fitz, but. Th- to think that that was going to do the job, it's it was a bad yeah. idea. Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, that's where they're at. They're going to pay the the piper now because yeah, they're likely time. out. Uh, yeah. Pierre LeBrun coming up, and uh, Raptors in action, Leafs in action tomorrow night. March Madness. We got a golf tournament going on. Justin Thomas is currently sitting atop the leaderboard there. We'll replay the Sammy thing. We will get back into Sammy Sosa in the clip yeah. we just played. You and JP are creating <laughs> Everyone's some happy. Everyone's yeah, on the same good. page. Yeah. Every, the wheels are in motion. We're rocking here. Final um, hour. <laughs> not a question that I expected from you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Final hour coming up. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app.